All right, gang, the first thing we're going to do, we've downloaded all those wonderful pieces of software, and you're going to go to your downloads area, wherever they are, and you're going to click on the files that you downloaded, and you're going to follow the install instructions. First, let's go to FractalBot. So it loads up. I'm going to pick AxeFX3 because that's what we're doing today. And look at that. It found it. Isn't that great? So it says, okay, and I'm in send mode right now. And then there's receive mode. Okay. So there's two different tabs at the top. All right. So this is when you're going to send stuff to it like a firmware file. And this is when you're going to get stuff back from it. Okay. So one thing we're going to do is we have to figure out a file to send. So... You know, I create myself a nice little folder that's got everything in it. Um, Axe 3 firmwares, you know, and I keep records of all of them. And there's Axe 3 1.0 firmware, which is great. And so I have picked it. Remember, you can download the firmware. So you would point this thing towards where you did your download. And then you just click begin and you lay back and this bar is going to go. Now, we're not going to sit here for the next 10 minutes to do that, but that is how you can do a firmware update. If there's a new firmware, this is where you would do that. But before you would ever do a firmware update, the very smart thing to do is you're going to save everything, okay? So let's talk about that. I have set up a very specific place because I have a lot of units. You may not need to do this. I have different files to back things up for different areas. I've got a studio unit and a live unit. so. Here we go, you know, backups, firmware 11. These are a lot of backups. I do it regularly all the time. So I've said, okay, this is where I want to back up my files to, all my backups, so I know where they are if I ever have to go back and get them and resend them. So now when you click begin, it's going to ask you, okay, what do you want to back up? Now you can back everything up, which is what this button does, okay? Or you can deselect all, and then you can pick very specific things. You can just back up your system file and your foot controller uh, settings. Just that. You can back up just the user banks, which I'd advise you to do after you install them, but you should not have to do that every time you back up. That's sort of a once, every once in a while, because that takes a while to do, because there are a thousand user caps, all right? But these banks, you're going to want to back those suckers up. When you connect your device, you should get this message of connected firmware, and it'll tell you what firmware you're on. So if you're ever wondering, there are other ways to check that, but this is one way to check. It's in FractalBot when it sees it. And on the last screen, it wasn't there. So I had to restart FractalBot. So anyway, now we're ready to begin to receive files. So uh, I'm going to deselect everything, and I'm going to back up the system block, and I'm going to back up preset bank A. And I've got my frac uh, my AxeFX3 set on an empty preset because, again, that will speed things up. And we're just going to sit here and watch it, and I'll talk for a minute. So the global blocks system bank goes very fast. But now look at it rock through. It's going through. Remember, each patch, each preset, or it says patch here, has eight scenes. And it's saving them pretty rapidly. It's just sort of rocking through that. So you can do an individual bank here to save it. You can do uh, three or four banks all at once. You, can, you get to pick. You can do the whole backup for everything. And I encourage you the first time you get your unit to just back everything up once. Just walk away and go make yourself some coffee or some tea or something like that. It might take 15 minutes for all of it. But banks back up pretty quick. Um, when you put it on an empty preset has been my experience here, usually within a minute to two minutes. So hopefully that's helpful to you um, to know that. So we're just sort of here waiting on that. And again, you're going to want to set up in a directory very specifically, create a directory called firmware at, uh, 11 backups, firmware 10 backups, firmware 12 backups. Every time there's a new firmware, you really do want to save everything in the proper firmware bank that those presets were created on. That's going to save you a lot of headaches. Trust me on this. So our backup is now complete. Okay. Pretty cool. Now, the other thing you can do is you can send files. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wipe out my bank by sending an empty bank file. I actually have an empty bank somewhere in here. I've got to find it not sure exactly where it is let's see maybe it's in here 
Yeah, there we go. Empty. And I'm going to send this empty bank. There's nothing in it into bank A because we're going to, as we do this video, we're going to see some things. Uh, we're going to add some things. We're going to install some things. So warning, if you continue you will permanently overwrite 128 presets in your XFX3, maybe so, but I just saved those 128 presets to my computer and I can put them back anytime I want using this process like we're going to do with empty bank. So right now I'm going to go ahead and send the empty bank to bank A. It's going to wipe out everything I did in bank A going to be totally empty now as you think about the fact that you have four banks in your xfx3 and each bank holds 128 presets and each preset can hold eight different scenes or sounds so it really is a lot if you know how to take advantage of it you probably want to think about how do i structure my stuff you know it came with the factory a and bank a and the factory b and bank b and the factory c and bank c and then bank d was empty well i like to think about it like this i like to think about factory bank a is probably what you want to call your working bank it's the bank that you spend most of your time in it's the bank that you would use for gigs, maybe if you're gigging or in your studio. And it's where you're gonna put your favorites. As you audition and play sounds, whether they're the Fractal presets, uh, Austin Buddy's Naked Amps Tone Pack, other great third-party preset providers, there's a bunch out there that are do good work. Um, think about Bank A as kind of where you organize your stuff, and we'll talk about how you do that in a little bit. So it's okay to do empty that out so that you've got space to do stuff and then you can fill up bank B, C, and D with kind of useful things and you can drag them into bank A. I hope all that makes sense. I'm sort of doing this to sort of help you think about how do you want to structure your unit? Some people I know have bank A as their working bank and then they have bank B as kind of their place that they can flip banks. They might have the factory banks A there for a while and then maybe they'll put a naked amps bank there for a while and then maybe they'll put some other stuff there for a while they rotate stuff in and out of bank b because it's easier to pull stuff from bank b into bank a than it is to pull stuff from bank d into bank a when you're dragging it in axe edit which we're going to talk about later uh, and then they may put the naked amps into banks c and d permanently so they always have access to those that's a good way to do it um, i have so many different banks and products it's a little hard for me to do it that way um, I wanted to make sure that you thought through that because you'll get frustrated otherwise because there's so much stuff and you want to think about where's my special place with my cool presets and I need to make sure I've got space for that. So that's why we're doing an empty in bank A on my Axe FX3, which we're going to look at in a little while when we go to Axe uh, Edit 3. But I wanted you to see how this process works and it told me it was successful. Now, what if you get an error message here that it didn't go through? or something slowed down, what do you do? Well, you want to check your USB connections, and I will also suggest you get the best USB cable that you can. I will tell you they're not all created alike. I've used old USB cables that would crap out. So get a good cable. They're only 10 or $15. On. So let's move on here. So we're out of this fractal bot piece of this. So I think you guys understand a little bit better how to use this. You're going to want to set up directories on it. Um, this will show you, by the way, if you say, well, where is this file? It'll show you if I click this, it'll open up a dialog window. You can't see it on your end, but here's mine, for example. I'm pulling it over. It says this is where it is in my Apple Finder. So, so you know that you can see stuff like that. Um, but anyway, again, send mode is what you use to send banks, but also firmwares. And receive mode is when you get everything from the unit, back it up to your computer. All this is just transferring data from your Axe FX3 to your computer and vice versa. That's what FractalBot does for all the different Fractal products. Okay, so let's move on.